Hello everybody, my name is Matthew White, coming to you from Ingram Micro's Business Transformation Center, and today we're showing off the Microsoft Teams Room interface on the WebEx Board Pro. As you can see here right next to me, this is the WebEx Board Pro. If you're not familiar with it, pretty much that's this big touchscreen device that's on the wall. It has the cameras built right into it. It has microphones built right into it. Now you can add additional microphones if you wanted to. You can run cables up to the table for hardware and HDMI input if you wanted to. You can run a uh, room navigator on the table if you wanted to and Ethernet that back to the device itself to control like dialing into a meeting from the table. But what a lot of people love about this board is it's all in one design. So you don't have to do all those things if you don't want to. You can just install the board on the wall, plug it in, wireless or wired to your network, and you're ready to go. Now, when you first boot up the board, it's going to ask you what operating system do you want on the board, so which interface. In this case, I'm actually showing off the Microsoft Teams room, which, like I said, just launched out of beta. Now, you can choose to still install the standard Cisco operating system, and then I'll actually show you the differences between those two in this video today. So we're first going to walk really quickly through the MTR interface. It's super simple to use. If you're familiar with MTR for other devices, it's going to be very similar. So that's the advantage of going with MTR because if you have a whole bunch of different manu manufacturer devices throughout your environment, if you want to add one Cisco Board Pro to your environment and you don't want to have to teach people how to use the WebEx interface, you can just install this and then everybody's already familiar with how to use it because they've been using all the other rooms with Microsoft Teams room. So uh, let's walk through the interface here real quick for you. Uh, as you can see here in the top left hand corner we have the date and time along with the name of the board. We also have the ability to click this Meet Now button and actually invite someone to the meeting. We have a whiteboard button, so if we click on that, it'll actually load up the whiteboard app. So this will give us the actual Microsoft Teams whiteboard. Uh, it just takes a second for it to load the app onto the board itself. And then once it's gone ahead and loaded that in, uh, you can actually see across the bottom here that you have your different uh, pen colors, you have your highlighter, you have like a laser pointer, eraser, text, all this stuff can be added to the board itself. So let's say I wanted to draw a circle on the board here. I can just press that circle. I can add text to it if I wanted to. So this is great when you're trying to figure out like a flow plan or a flow chart. You can use these type of text and uh, just kind of add them into your whiteboard to make it easier for people to read. Um, I can also choose to just do like a green pen and I can draw on the board itself. Now the WebEx Board Pro does have their own styluses with them as well, so it has an active stylus. So if you prefer to use a stylus versus writing with your finger, I can choose to do that. So I can take this and add an angle ruler to this as well if that helps me for creating my lines. I want to make sure that they're like perfectly straight or things like that. I can do that here using this. Uh, I also have the ability to go in and highlight certain things. Again, it's now I can draw over my other things that I've drawn on the board. And I can put in actual text itself. So if I prefer to type versus write, I have this ability. And let's go ahead and enter that in. And then you have this that I could drag around. So again, you can make this very easy to read if you decided to. You can then delete these. So I can go back through here and delete these different pieces off, off the board itself if I chose to do so. Um, I can also lasso a lot of things at once and delete those all at once. So it gives me that capability on the whiteboard. And then I do have the ability to actually start the meeting directly from this or stop the whiteboard. So you can use this whiteboard capability either in a meeting or out of a meeting. So let me go ahead and stop the whiteboard. Now you do have the ability to share. Um, as you can see here, there's no device connected via HDMI. 
the, if you want to share to the board itself, you do have to actually connect a hardware HDMI cable. So keep that in mind if you're somebody that likes to share wirelessly. You may want to think about the Cisco operating system for that reason alone. Now, if I go back underneath this more button, I can see my volume adjustment. I can go into my advanced settings on the board itself. And then if I swipe out from the right here, I actually have the ability to see my camera input. I can click here on my camera and I can change how my camera is set up. So right now, if I had a lot of people in this room, it would frame everybody in the single shot. If I pick frames, it's actually going to zoom in on each person individually and chop up the, the video feed so that everybody has a, a much more zoomed in image of themselves. Or I can just do speaker tracking, which if I'm the active speaker, it'll jump the camera over to me, zoom in on, my, on me versus everybody else. And then if somebody else starts talking, it'll switch over to them. So the speaker in the group is the more common ways you've seen this used in the past. Frames is a relatively new feature that has launched on the board here itself. So let me change this back to group here. You do also have the manual capabilities with the camera, so I can choose to zoom in and out. And as you can see here, I could take this and zoom all the way across the room if somebody was sitting there on the other side and I wanted to get a close shot of them. Now let me switch that back to auto. And yep, there we go. Uh, so if I go back out of this, there we go. and then I can choose to have the self view hidden, shown in call only, or always show. Let's show it in the call. And then I can also choose to make that full screen. So if I wanted to see how it looked to the other people more easily, I could choose to do that. Now, let me just shrink that back down again. Uh, you do have your microphone options here and your share source. So again, you can either go USB-C or HDMI into the device. Uh, you have your brightness level, your speaker level, all right here on the side slide out menu. And then if you do decide to join that meeting, one of the great things about this board is you can actually invite the board to the meeting. And then when you come into the room, you don't have to dial the meeting code or anything like that. I just walk into the room, press this join button, and it's going to join my meeting. Now, if I uh, had other people joining remote or things like that, I would see them up on this board as additional users. Um, great thing because this is all Microsoft, I can have the full list of people that are joined the meet, have joined the meeting, people that are invited that haven't joined, things like that is all visible. Um, I do still have the share buttons down here. I have the people. So if I had a list of people that were joining, I could click that. And then I do have uh, the volume adjustment, the camera adjustment, and mute on and off right here at the bottom. Once you're all done with your meeting, pretty simple and straightforward. You just go here and end your call. And if you accidentally click that, you could click the rejoin button right there to get right back into your call again, or you can hit this back button and now you're back in the main meeting. And as you can see here, if you schedule additional meetings later in the day, those will pop up here as well. So you can see what's coming up later on in the day and you know if the room's available, if you have to leave, all that. So again, it's pretty straightforward on how to use this, which is one of the things that Cisco prides themselves on is simplicity. How easy is it for their equipment to be used? So with the MTR interface, you get that simplicity even further. Now, again, if you're looking to maybe demo this and you don't have a WebEx Board Pro, uh, take a look at the Desk Pro. The Desk Pro, if you sign up for the beta uh, from Cisco, you can actually have this interface installed on the WebEx Desk Pro and play around with it with a much smaller device. Now, that's only available for beta users right at this point in time, but if you do decide to go down that road, just sign up for the beta program and you can get access to it that way. We're going to switch over to the Cisco interface next to show you what are some of the differences and how it looks and feels a little bit different so you can get a better understanding of which operating system you might want to install on your board pro. Okay. Now I've gone ahead and actually switched this over to the Cisco operating system. Now be aware that if you do want to switch between these two, it's not a super easy process. You do actually have to factory reset the board and actually switch over to the other uh, operating system. That way you can't just like flip back and forth between them very easily. But that said, uh, once you have this switched over to the Cisco OS, you do get a couple of little differences. So right here you can see like 
the look and feel has changed around a little bit. We have the medians off to the left hand side. We can see if the median's been uh, in progress. Any other medians again would show down below there. We have the green button that we can click to join the median just like we did before. Uh, we do also have the ability to do a call. So if I press this call button, I can look up uh, in the factory uh, favorites or I can actually look at my directory and see who is available uh, to call. And then if I switch over to the whiteboard, you'll notice that the whiteboard experience is slightly different. So if I go ahead and open that up, uh, you can see here now that it's using the Cisco whiteboard versus the Microsoft Teams one. Uh, from here, same thing, I can either draw with my finger or I can actually uh, use this active pen as well. And the one thing that I've noticed is the whiteboard feature on the WebEx side is just slightly smoother. Uh, if you were to compare these side by side, the speed at which it recognizes the drawing is just a little bit faster on the WebEx side versus the Microsoft Teams side, but it is very similar. Um, if I go underneath shapes, I can still go in here and actually have it draw the shape for me. Um, I can go in and let's say pick a square and again, like drag these around. Now, the one thing you will notice is I don't have like a good way to type inside these shapes where I did on the Microsoft uh, WebEx, or I'm sorry, the Microsoft whiteboard, um, but I can still go in here and change the color of them and delete them. Um, if I wanted to write inside the space, uh, let me just switch back to, let's go green. So I can't actually do that. Like I've got to try to, like it doesn't let me draw on top of it. So uh, it's kind of good and bad at the same time. You're getting some advantages on the whiteboard and some disadvantages. Just really depends on how you use it the most. I do still have the selection capability. So I can select a whole bunch of things and delete them all at once. And I do have these little notepads. This is what I would use if you wanted to type into uh, something. So I could say, um, and I can change the color on that. Now I can drag that around the board. If I was to draw on this board, uh, let me just switch here. So say I was drawing on the board here, um, you can see it's going behind the note. Uh, if I do actually, this is called infinity whiteboard, so I can pinch and drag and actually have like an unlimited amount of whiteboard space. From there, if I do wanna go back, I can actually just zoom in on that area and get a closer view of it. So if you've got a lot, a very large diagram that you're designing, this works really well for that. Um, I also have this pen here, which if I was to like draw a circle, it tries to auto-correct that. Same thing with a square, it's auto-correcting those shapes for me. So um, if I was to, to write, so I, see it's trying to, to correct those as I'm writing to make it more legible for you. Uh, if I go ahead and press this three dots here, I can rename the whiteboard, I can save that whiteboard to a WebEx app space, or I can just delete the whiteboard itself and move back to the main screen. One thing you will notice here is a couple different ways to start the meeting. So you do have your overall calendar, you can pull up files. I do have the WebEx meeting itself here, so I can just type in the meeting number and start the meeting. Uh, I do have a Google Meet capability as well, and Zoom. So I can punch in a Zoom meeting number here as well. And then I do have my screen share, and as you'll notice here, I have more options when it comes to wirelessly screen share. So not only do I have AirPlay and Miracast, so if you're going from an Apple device, you most likely are using AirPlay. If you're using Miracast, that's just Windows K on your PC, and you can actually find this device as a wireless device to cast to, and then uh, just do that without any cables. You can also go to the WebEx Share site and punch in this code, and then it will allow you to share to the board as well wirelessly. So a couple different ways that you can do this wirelessly. You can still hardwire via HDMI. If you do, that gives you an option to share via the HDMI as well. Um, if I go, actually, the one other thing that I did do with this board is I actually punched in an additional website. So from here, you can do any website you want. Some people use Microsoft Office 365 so they can get at their files and share them that way. Um, but you can just, Pretty much give it a website, it'll give you an icon and this will pop up the website. So I can sit here and scroll through this. Um, you can use this for telling people how to use the board. You could use this for like a people finder, search your environment, whatever you have in a website, maybe it's the lunch menu in the cafeteria, could be loaded onto this board as another option that you could pick. So it just depends on how you wanna use the board. 
you can customize it for that. So that's one of the advantages of the, uh, the Cisco operating system. Now I can also draw on top of this as well. So it'll take a screenshot of this and I can then circle or highlight the different areas that I want to inside this screenshot. And then once I'm all said and done, I can again hit those three dots and I can save that or I can go ahead and delete that as well. Uh, if I was to swipe up from the bottom, this system also allows me to have multiple different screens or sites open. So I can let them load in the background, jump back to them, things like that if I wanted to. And then to get rid of them, I just swipe up and it closes the site. So I can go back to the home screen and then swipe back over. So again, you're getting a little bit more capability out of the board if you're using the Cisco operating system. But if you're not standardized on Cisco and you've got a lot of other systems, maybe you want to have people use the MTR interface just for ease of use and what they're familiar with. So again, you can get the uh, address from the board right there in the top left. You can put it on do not disturb and all your settings are still here on the right hand side. You do still have the same camera settings, you have your brightness and then you have your device settings here as well. So you can go in here and uh, you do have some additional things like WebEx Assistant. So if I say, hey WebEx, I can actually talk to the board and ask it to do things for me like join my meeting and things like that without even having to get off up off the table. And then if we go in here too, you do also have face recognition name labels. So it can, if people want to register their, their image to the system, it'll then recognize them and put up their name underneath their video feed for the other people that are on the call. And uh, that is everything else on here is pretty much the same thing as what you found on the Microsoft Teams room. So I hope this was informative. If you have any additional questions, feel free to let me know. But uh, look forward to trying out this Microsoft Teams room and seeing if it works for you and your company. We'll see you next time. Bye.